stay with mommy, stay with mommy. Okay.
the cute little Cameron. What's your name? Cameron.
powered by Red Energy. I'm Keeper Ange and we would like to acknowledge the Camaragal who are the traditional caretakers of this land and who for thousands of years looked after local marine life here in Sydney Harbour. And we share their connection with marine life through our seals. Now, all the seals you're going to meet today are either rare, rescued or relocated. And these amazing seals are Taronga's ambassadors for the wild. Now, the first seal you're going to meet is one of our rescued seals. He's a gorgeous boy by the name of Bondi, so please welcome him now. Hey, buddy. Uh, Bondi here is a nine-year-old New Zealand or long-nosed fur seal. Now, they go by both of those names because originally they were discovered in New Zealand, and that's how they got the name, but they are native here in Australia as well. So there is a bit of a push to change that name to the long nose for a seal. As you can see, Bondi does have a very prominent and beautiful nose, don't you, buddy? Now, Bondi was found on Bondi Beach with some pretty severe shark wounds down his entire side. So because of that, he had to spend many months in our vet hospital recovering and regaining his condition. So he wasn't a good candidate for release, but now he's a very important ambassador for his species. And do you want to say hi to everyone, Bondi? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And uh, believe it or not, we all have something in common with Bondi. So have a look at your hand. Now let's have a look at Bondi's front flipper. <laughs> Thanks, Bonds. Bondi has the same bone structure in this flipper you have in your hand. And while those flippers may look awkward for getting around, they allow Bondi to move about faster and easier than you might expect. So Bonds, you ready? Let's go for a walk, buddy. Notice how he can use all four flippers underneath his body as he's climbing to the top of our wharf. Well done, Bondi. There are a few predator seals need to look out for. There is, of course, the killer whale, and there's that other predator that Bondi's already met. Bonds, which one are we talking about? That's the one. Does anyone know what that is? That's right, Bondi's famous shark impersonation. That is the hairiest, chubbiest shark you're ever going to see. But what he's showing you is a natural behavior. Seals used to cool their bodies down. 
Now Bondi, being a fur seal, has two very thick layers of fur. So it's great at keeping the heat in his body, but it's only his naked and hairless slippers that allow the heat to come back out again. Now Bondi's slippers are also incredibly strong. At the moment, he's weighing in at around 90 kilos, but he has no trouble at all holding up his entire body weight. Great job, Bondi. Well done, buddy. Now, we're only out here to start things off, so we've got one more job, Bondi. Should we say goodbye? That's a silly wave. There we go. All right, please welcome out a couple of friends of ours. We're going to be joined by Keeper Brad and Murphy. Thanks, Edge and Bondi. Well, Murphy here, as you can see, looks a little bit different to Bondi. That's because he's a relocated California sea lion. Native to the west coast of the United States, Murphy was born at a zoo in Queensland. About nine years ago, he moved down to us here at Sydney. Now, Murphy's out here today to show you all the life of a seal. Now you might notice today that Murphy and our seals, well they're very good at catching fish when we throw it to them. And that's simply because they have an incredible set of whiskers. Murph, let's have a close look at yours today. Now we'll see how easily he can move those whiskers about. On the count of three, call out whiskers, but watch Murphy very closely. One, two, three. Whiskers! Good Murph. Those whiskers are really important to a seal. It's what they use to find their food out there in our oceans. Now, at the moment, Murphy is one of our biggest boys. He's weighing in at around 250 kilos. On the average day, he's packing away about 10 kilos of fish. And that's pretty much two of these buckets full to the top. So Murph, what happens when that fish runs out? Sad, isn't it, buddy? And sadly, we're overfishing our oceans and it's making it harder for animals like seals to find enough food out there. Now Murphy's going to help me out this morning by having a quick check down in the water to see if we've got any fish here today. Thanks Murph. Do you want to have a quick peek? Do you see any fish? 
no fish down there today. But Murph, is there something that we can all do about that? <coughs> He's right, there is. You can all be champions for the wild. Next time you're out there buying seafood, simply ask if they sell MSC. Buying MSC certified seafood is your guarantee that you're buying from a fishery that supports fish stocks, jobs, and the environment. Simply look out for that logo. That's right, Murph. Buying seafood with that logo will ensure that seals like Murphy here have a future. And that makes him a very happy sea lion. You're very happy today, aren't you? Very happy today. Great job, buddy. Well, Murph, it's time for us to go find you some more fish. Let's say a big goodbye. We're going to welcome back our keeper, Ange. She'll be coming out with Diego. Thanks so much, Brad and Murph. Didn't they do a great job, everyone? Well done, guys. Now, this beautiful boy next to me is Diego. And Diego's nine years old, another California sea lion who was born in Europe. So he was born in Holland and came to live with us when he was only two years old. So Diego, do you want to say hi? Ah! <laughs> a part of caring for our seals means teaching them behaviors. Now Diego here won't do anything he doesn't want to do. It takes time and a lot of trust. And the behavior can be something quite simple, like asking Diego to open his mouth so I can do a quick health check. How are those teeth looking today, buddy? Good boy. Or it can be something far more challenging and high energy, like the next behavior Diego is going to show us. He's going to do what we call a high bell. So he's learned to jump off of our cliff into the water and to touch this ball with his nose. Now we're going to do that today as part of a training session, but I need everyone's help. On the count of three, I need everyone to throw your arms up into the air and as loud as you can, yell out, jump Diego. Now he's not gonna make up from where he's sitting. So Diego, if you wanna climb up to the top, buddy. All right, he's in position. If everyone's ready, I'll count you down. One, two, three. Now, I thought you did a pretty good job, but let's ask Diego. Is that loud enough for you? He said no. That's all right, we've got a big audience today, so I'm sure it can be a lot louder and with a lot more energy. Jump, jump Diego on three. One, two, three. Yeah. What a great job from Diego. I think we even gave out a free shower to our front row over there. Well done, buddy. And we really appreciate everyone joining us here today. Now stay where you are. Our seals and keepers will be back out to give you their final farewells. But remember, your choices matter. So choose MSC, thanks Diego, and you all can be champions for the wild. Bye for now.
Today, Tawonga, we're keeping you safe at a distance. No lines. Have a look at how she moves her tail around. It's much like the rudder of a boat. It helps her to steer, but also control. Um, uh, <laughs> Alright, I'll take over the talkie now so Jack can focus on working Stella. We don't have the strongest wind conditions today. So it means that Stella's probably going to fly in a more predictable pattern, which works well for Jack because he's trying to figure it out. And that pattern is over the top of the roof. Yeah, wow, indeed still. But these birds are designed to catch food in midair. And a big part of that is because they are so numerous. So a thousand birds in the sky at any one time. Yeah. For Australia's third largest hawk, which is known as the black breasted buzzard. <laughs> well, everybody, this is Slam Up. You can see where she gets her name. And even with her sharp beak and her, those impressive looking feet, she still needs a bit of help to get inside the egg and the rock. Wow. It's the perfect tool for the job. You're going to go back to your rock slam? Back to Now, believe it or not, the use of a tool is nothing we ever had to train slammer to do. This behaviour is pure instinct. Hey, well done! Meaning, oops, let me help you with that one. Meaning that she hatched out of her egg knowing exactly what she needed to do. That instinct is so strong, she's going to go back to seconds, make sure she's got it all, show the egg his boss. Yeah! <laughs> Good job, Slam. Very impressive. Oh, you want to go down and get that? Try again. What do you say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You then we might go to different walkthrough avies around the zoo. Nice work. And then we're going to start to take them to ovals around Mossman. And every time we go to a new context, a new area, we go back to one of the most basic steps. So we cut back all of that distance and make sure that's really achievable for them. So we're changing all these other kind of things. So with Jack today, that's exactly what she's doing. Just making that distance much smaller. So these birds, uh, generally, when we think about them, they have to that they can um, hopefully correct themselves. There were three in this group. One of them, when they had the spook and ran around and saw their mate behind them, decided to jump off the fence. But these animals are quite light and dynamic, so for their physiology, it doesn't cause them any issues. There goes one of them. Run, Boris, run! The second one. Um, and now, we'll keep it a moment. I can see the third one. I can just see the the weeds really, just moving from side to side. Can you see them? Are they just running along or have they started climbing yet? Oh, they're just on the other side. So they may climb up. The other thing is, if it's a little bit too challenging for them, um, they may just take themselves along the long way home, just amongst all of the growth that we have down here. Okay. I'm not gonna worry about them too much. I'll give them some more support if we need it when I can spend some time on them. Uh, but what I will say is, Again, unfortunately, that is all I can offer today with uh, our resources. There you are! Hi! I really, I'm getting so excited. Um, that wasn't the ideal response for them, but um, I might turn off my microphone and we'll see if we can allow them to have some success. You want to head on over? So these birds... Favoritism. Yeah, your self favoritism. Uh, favoritism. You train these, right? Yeah. So this is your problem? Yeah. All right. They're just adventurous. They've got a lot of personality. That's true. So um, eventually, they're just on the other side now. If you just chill there for a bit, Jack, they'll come over. And hopefully what will happen is they'll walk on over to a hand. She'll be able to give them uh, sunflower seeds, one of their favourite things. She'll be able to pick them up and pop them back on the fence. There we go. 
So a big part of it, and that's why it doesn't matter if they end up going back the other way. That's okay.
Can you press one?
смеешься, ты будешь лежать на спине.
Thank you. 